Some rejoice, some recoil at a Trump presidency. Are we facing a constitutional crisis? In a word, yes. But this card has been in the American deck for years, and its number has just come up. Gina Passarella explains. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Donald Trump, as a successor to George Washington, has left most of us, including lawyers and law professors, with an opinion. The largest concern has to be that we have somebody in the White House who doesn't seem to have a strong grasp of what the rule of law means, who doesn't seem to understand the Constitution, and that's got to be concerning. Predictions of doom, I'm not right, quite there yet. Trump assumes power with the nation at its most polarized in generations, summoning a reminder from a former Supreme Court justice. Franklin was asked by someone, I think, on the streets of Philadelphia shortly after the 1787 convention adjourned, and what kind of government the Constitution would give us if it was adopted. And Franklin's famous answer was, uh, a republic if you can keep it. I see a new nation ready to take its place in the world. Not an empire, but a republic and a republic of laws, not men. The rule of law. The founders established it as our nation's cornerstone. But by any measure, the three branches of government, like America's infrastructure, have been showing signs of wear for some time. Greater power assumed by the presidency under both George W. Bush and Barack Obama. A dysfunctional, if not obstructionist, Congress. And the failure to appoint a Supreme Court justice for the longest period in our history. Will a Trump presidency rehabilitate these institutions or cause them to fall further into crisis? I am concerned in particular about press access, press access to public debate, issues of public policy, access to the functioning of government. I'm not saying that there aren't aspects of the traditional media that don't reflect some kind of bias. And I think that's a problem. But the idea of allowing the information of government to come forward only in a tweet that's controlled by one person is tantamount to state media. For those most concerned, the First Amendment tops the list. A war on the media and allegations of Lugenpresse, or lying press. You are fake news, sir. Relaxing libel laws. We can sue them and win lots of money. Diminishing First Amendment protections for flag burning, even the ability to peaceably assemble. Other concerns based on Trump's statements include judicial independence, violating Muslims' equal protection under the law, and promises of reviving torture and stop and frisk. These concerns, if realized, could further weaken our democratic institutions and cede more power to the president. If so, what is the role of lawyers and judges? I don't worry about our losing Republican government in the United States because I'm afraid of a foreign invasion. What I worry about is when the problems get bad enough, as they might do, for example, with another serious terrorist attack, as they might do with another financial meltdown, some one person will come forward and say, give me total power and I will solve this problem. That is the way democracy dies. Fortunately, we still have an independent judiciary, and it is our obligation as members of the bar uh, to take that very seriously and to use all of our talents and resources to make sure that the law is enforced and enforced equally throughout the land. It's important for all of us to remember that, that we have three branches, that we have a federal government and a state government, that we have cities and localities. There are lots of different places that we can have impacts on what people's lives look like. It is no small thing to build a new world, gentlemen. We have our republic. We must endeavor to keep it if we can. Trump isn't without his supporters from the legal community, with many lawyers helping his transition team and serving as his senior advisors. But there's a large contingent of the legal community who feel they have a duty to stand up for the rule of law, which they say is under attack in a Trump administration. For the American Law Journal, I'm Gina Passarella.